86 Minolta released V Camera 1, or TC1, quite possibly the greatest film point and shoot of all time. It fits a full frame 28mm f3.5 lens, flash, and viewfinder into a footprint barely exceeding the size of a credit card. To put this into perspective, the smallest modern digital full frame camera that you can get is the Sigma FP, which has measurements of 113 by 70 by 45 millimeters, and that is without a lens or flash. The TC1 has both of those and is still more than 10 millimeters or more smaller in every dimension. It is a mind-bogglingly impressive feat of engineering, and that's all very well and good, you might be thinking. But there are plenty of small film cameras, and yes, you would be right, but almost none of them achieve the same level of refinement that Minolta ascended to when they dropped the TC1. I don't want to overhype it, but using it has genuinely been some of the most fun I've had with film photography in ages, and let me tell you about why. Let's start by talking about the camera body. The TC1's champagne gold titanium shell goes a long way in making it feel good. Titanium is a sturdy but relatively light material, and it contributes to the tactile essence of the TC1, which I would describe as robustly fragile. The front left of the camera has a small leather pad where you grip the camera alongside three small ridges on the back. More than any other camera I have ever used, the TC1 feels like not just a camera, but a statement accessory, like a luxury watch or bracelet. It's quite sturdy, by all means, but the build is a far cry from utilitarian, which could more aptly describe the excellent Ricoh GR cameras. You might also notice that the TC1 is more rectangular than a bar of soap, and from using it, I can tell you it's almost as slippery. And despite it being a spit in the face to the field of ergonomic design, it gets away with it by being so small that it fits in the the palm of your hand, and at around 200 grams with a battery, not weighing much more than air. Continuing our tour of the TC1, on the back behind the ridges is a small cutout where you can see what film you're currently using. This is the first camera I've ever owned with this particular feature, and in God is it nice to always know exactly what is loaded into your camera. No longer do I misguidedly attempt to capture the beautiful rays of neon light in Shibuya with black and white film. To the left of this port are four small raised dots, which I assume are to prevent the TC1's buttons from making contact with whatever surface you place it on, but if I'm mistaken, please let me know down in the comments. Above the film door is the button for illuminating the info display, the viewfinder, its diopter dial, on and off switch, and spot exposure. The viewfinder is minuscule and in that sense, a compromised experience. However, despite the actual difficulty you might have in looking through it, it packs a substantial amount of information. The bottom of the viewfinder displays the focus information, with a half press of the shutter button displaying the distance from the subject. On the left side is the shutter speed that the camera is currently using. It's not in granular detail, but I'll explain more about why when I get to the shutter speed and lens specifications. The diopter on this camera is, unfortunately, quite frustrating. My friend using the camera asked, is it always supposed to be blurry? And this confused me greatly, because conversely, as a rangefinder, the viewfinder should always be sharp. The problem, of course, was with the diopter, which doesn't lock and thus spins around like a little roulette wheel with daily carry, which means that you're going to be changing it quite often. Turning the TC1 on and off is an experience. A small mechanical whir in the front cover flies open with quite possibly the most satisfying sound I have ever heard a camera make. As the rectangular lens island rises a centimeter or so from the body, it has the precision of a samurai unsheathing his blade with the mechanical whir of 90s tech. Okay, I'm drifting into weirdo territory here, but really, it does give me chills. On top of the camera is the info display, which dutifully displays all of the currently active flash settings, as well as helping you to adjust manual focus, ISO, exposure, compensation, the self timer, etc. Which is all controlled with the dial in combination with a slider angled slightly forward to the front of the camera so that it's easier for you to manipulate with your index finger. The settings dial is in the same lovely finish as the rest of the camera and adjustable with your thumb. To change settings like focus and flash, you navigate to the setting on the dial and then adjust the setting in one of two directions with the slider. It's a surprisingly smooth experience, especially given how frustrating adjusting these settings can be on modern cameras and just, well, you know, the size of the TC1. 
Rounding out our tour of the TC1, there's the shutter button, which half presses for AF, and then to its side, one additional button, also for AF. Finally, on the left side of the camera is the film door latch, and on the bottom is the battery door and a manual film rewind button. The TC1 has a lot of controls and settings, especially for a film camera of its size released so long ago, but nothing here feels superfluous. There are no gimmicks and no glaring admissions. It strikes the perfect balance between minimalism and functionality, letting you get the photos you want without having to brood over the process. And oh god, the photos you want, you will get. It isn't the instrument that's being played that makes the difference, but the man who plays it. The Minolta G Rokor 28mm f3.5 multi coated spherical lens on the TC1 is quite unique due to its absence of aperture blades. Instead, it features three perfectly circular discs, providing a total of four aperture settings. These discs result in extremely smooth background blur. However, with a maximum aperture of f3.5, you won't often see gigantic bokeh balls or whatever. Personally, I find the size of a lens aperture increasingly less important. And unless you have a specific use case where it's critical, I don't think you should be too concerned either. After all, a lens's quality is simply not determined by its maximum aperture. The TC1's aperture setting is manually set, so it doesn't offer shutter priority auto exposure. However, regardless of the aperture, the G-Rocor lens delivers sharp and contrasty images. When reviewing my developed photos, I sometimes had to double check to make sure I wasn't looking at photos from my Zeiss 35mm f1.4, which is extremely high praise. That lens weighs twice as much as the TC1. Still love it though. The quirky nature of the TC1's shutter speed, which I alluded to earlier, is due to technical limitations imposed by combination of the lens and the leaf shutter. Although I'm not an engineer and can't explain the technicalities, the TC1 has a maximum shutter speed of 1 350th at all aperture settings. However, at f3.5 and f5.6, the camera can reach a maximum of 1 750th. This means that, counterintuitively, it may be better to use a wider aperture when shooting in bright sunlight. Ultimately, I think the maximum shutter speed of 1 750th gets the job done, mainly because film has a much, much greater latitude for overexposure than digital sensors. Many of the photos I showcased were taken in extremely bright sunlight on Cinecil 800 ISO film. And while overexposure doesn't necessarily enhance the color or rendition of the photos, I think they all came out looking nice. The TC1's flash is impressive as well. It boasts surprising power and a solid recycle speed, taking about 5 seconds between shots. Additionally, the TC1 can capture approximately one shot per second. While some reviewers have mentioned concerns about the minimum flash shutter speed of 1 60th, 
suggesting it could be problematic for capturing backgrounds at night. I personally haven't encountered any issues with it. In summary, the TC1 delivers exceptional image quality. So much so that Minolta released a thread mount version of the Giro Core lens for use on Leica cameras. The only minor issue I encountered with the Giro Core lens was occasional, very angular glare in one corner of the frame when shooting into light. However, this only affected a small portion of the frame, and I believe it would be quite easy to edit out if so desired. The overall usability of the TC1 is wonderful, making it a joy to use for any photographer. Loading and unloading film is self-explanatory and fast, ensuring you never miss a moment. The autofocus is quick and accurate with 455 unique steps. You simply half press to autofocus on the center box and then reframe your photo, taking a shot with a full press. The two segment center weighted spot metering works spectacularly, with the vast majority of my photos coming out properly exposed and with the remainder more being the fault of my film's lack of dynamic range. One drawback to consider is the camera's loudness. The TC1's powerful motor and such a tiny body results in noticeable noise during operation. However, unless you require extreme discretion for your photography, this shouldn't be a significant issue. Let's discuss the price and value proposition of the TC1. I'm going to keep this short because frankly, film camera prices fluctuate wildly and I could equally argue that the TC1 at its current nearly $1,000 going price is a good or terrible value, with both perspectives being neither true or false. My personal opinion is that the price of the standard TC1 is pretty good for what you get. If you're concerned about the price, then I would seriously urge that you consider looking into a used digital Ricoh GR camera instead of any 20 plus year old premium point and shoot. The TC1 truly sets itself apart as the world's smallest automatic 35mm film camera, boasting a level of precision craftsmanship that warrants comparisons to prestigious brands like Rolex and Patek Philippe. This remarkable camera embodies a blend of quirky, loud, and elegant qualities that come together to create a minimalist and straightforward shooting experience. For me, the TC1 has reignited a passion for film photography with an intensity that I haven't felt since before the pandemic. If you're considering adding the TC1 to your collection, I wholeheartedly recommend giving it a chance. Its compact size and outstanding performance make it the perfect daily carry camera. The TC1's ability to produce exceptional images with ease will undoubtedly impress both seasoned photographers and those new to film. To sum it up, the Minolta TC1 stands out as an exceptional camera, making it my favorite compact film option. Its unique characteristics and user-friendly nature make it an invaluable addition to any photographer's toolkit, providing a truly enjoyable film photography experience. Don't hesitate to give the TC1 a try. You might just find it becomes an indispensable part of your photographic journey. Thank you so much for watching my review of the Minolta TC1. I hope you found this video informative and helpful in understanding the capabilities of this excellent compact camera. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel for more photography, gear reviews, and inspiring content. Your support truly helps me to continue to create these videos and share my passion for photography. Before you go, I've got a question for you. What's your go-to camera for daily carry and why? I really want to hear your thoughts and experiences so please share them in the comments down below. That's my air purifier. Thanks. Once again, this is Drew Waddell signing out from Tokyo. Thanks for watching and have a good one.